Hey, how's it going? And uh, welcome back to our How to Finish Drywall series on video. What we're going to do today is we're going to get into tapings, very basic operation in drywall, and probably uh, the place that started second or third. We got some uh, hanging issues to cover before the taping, maybe some pre filling and repair items, but uh, and we'll start with the basic joint. Uh, which we've got right here in this stairwell. We've got a joint here we need to tape and then we're going to do a couple of angles and uh, maybe we'll even be able to cover a butt joint or two before we're done. But uh, what I'm going to use in taping this joint is I'm going to use the standard 6 inch taping knife and I'm going to tape this by hand. Most of my videos are on automatic taping tools and how to use them but uh, on the how to finish drywall series we'll mix in a little hand finishing because that's the basic operation but uh, first thing you'd want to do is you'd want to apply a uniform layer of mud right on this joint with your six inch knife and then put a piece of tape on it. I prefer paper tape because it bonds with the drywall much better than fiberglass mesh and uh, if you use your mud not too thin not too thick but with a little water in it uh, hopefully thick enough to where it doesn't fly all over the place on you not real loose but uh, spreadable but with a little bit of water in it uh, the water helps the joint compound soak into the drywall and it helps the tape soak in also and it bonds very well and when you're taping the thing you want to do is you always want to put your tape on tight, uh, very close to the drywall. You don't want to lay it on a heavy bed of mud because it doesn't adhere well. Uh, joint compounds kind of like super glue. The more you use, the less it sticks. Uh, so when taping, you want to use a very light layer of mud under the tape, uh, which you can be generous on spreading mud to tape with. You just want to make sure you wipe out most of it from underneath the tape when you're wiping down. And uh, we'll take a look at how that works on this joint here. Well, what I'll do is I'll just run right up these steps here for a couple of steps. Got my joint compound right here. And uh, I'll just step up here and spread my mud on out toward this doorway where we're going to see what's going on. And uh, when you're spreading the mud, the thing is you want to spread it evenly. And you don't need to put a full six inches wide of joint compound. I'll probably alternate between calling it mud and joint compound. But you'll find that you can just put a healthy dab of mud right there in the corner of your knife and set that right on the joint and spread it with even, even pressure and you'll be in business. Then you want to put your tape right on that. And you just need to set that in by hand. You can also use the corner of your knife to press it in. And use your fingertip just to press the center of the tape right into your right into your joint that way by pressing it in you set the tape firmly into the joint compound and that way it won't move around on you when you're wiping down Now when you wipe down, you want to put a pretty good pressure on the knife. And you want to have the knife just follow center of that tape, center of the knife. And you want to clean off any edges you might leave on the other side. Now a six inch is wide enough 
to give you a nice fill on that recess. And that's the way you'd like to leave it after applying and wiping down your tape. You'd like to leave the recess nice and full. You'd like to have your minimum rod under your tape and a nice full recess. That way, you'll have a minimum shrinkage as it dries. But when it dries, you'll have pretty much a flat surface here. Now these uh, nail gashes where the drywall hangers use nails, they'll shrink in. But other than that, you want as flat a surface as you can get for applying your first coat of joint compound on that. You'd want to let this dry thoroughly before you did that. But uh, that's the basic operation, just a uniform coat of mud. Lay your tape on, wipe it down firmly. You don't want it laying on a lot of mud. You want it nice and tight in there. You want to have that recess nice and full when you're done taping, and that's a nice tape joint. So that'll be ready to finish out when we get back to it after it dries. Now we're going to do a couple of angles. And uh, the thing to keep in mind when we're doing angles is that the only thing we need to finish is the edge of this piece of paper. Uh, there is no recess or a tapered edge in the corners normally if drywall is hung horizontally. And uh, the only thing we're putting in the corner or laying on top of the drywall surface is this very thin piece of paper. And the only thing that really needs to be finished besides the fasteners in the corner is the edge of this tape. So we don't need to put on any thick heavy, you know, deep layer of mud there either. What we want to do is we want to put our tape in the corners. Uh, again, a uniform layer of mud. Uh, put our tape on that, wipe it down firmly. We want to get as much mud out from under the tape as we can. We really need uh, uh, enough tape or enough mud, excuse me, we only need enough mud under the paper to actually stick it to the drywall so it doesn't take a lot and we want the tape as close to the surface as we can be so that it's easy to finish uh, and it takes very little work or effort and uh, actually it doesn't take a lot of talent either uh, if you do drywall properly and we'll take a look at that here in a minute. <coughs> now for an angle or a corner I call anything 90 degrees an angle Probably shouldn't get over here a little farther. But uh, for an angle, I prefer the 5 inch taping knife. Uh, that allows me to, again, mud just the very corner or about one half of the knife with a nice dull mud. And I can put that right up at the ceiling and with an even pressure. I usually spread about four feet per stroke, and then I'm not putting on so much mud that it's going to take a lot of work or effort to get it off because really all we need is a thin layer under that tape. So we don't want to spend a lot of time putting on a lot of mud. It will just be turning around and taking off. So this is about the only real skill in drywall is spreading mud evenly. It does take a little practice, but it's not a difficult thing. It's uh, it's like it's kin to flowing paint off a paintbrush. Uh, probably very similar. But uh, you can just use a very light pressure doing this and you just want to spread your joint compound evenly and you want to have a full complete coat you want it thick enough to make sure that you don't have any dry spots uh, that's one of the problems some people have with paper tape if they're not used to finishing dry they always do get dry spots under the tape and that gives you blisters now I'm going to grab some tape over here and we're going to take our tape and 
it'll roll off about an eight foot section. I like to I like to measure it from the joint to the ceiling here on this uh, top board on a horizontal hanging job. And we can just rip that off and we want to fold it. Put a nice crisp crease in it. And you can do that by uh, wrapping a few fingers around right into the crease and uh, holding it this way and running it over your index finger. But with these fingers here into the crease, you just got to pull and uh, you'll be creased just right and watch out for those nasty paper cuts. Well, once you've got that folded, you'll want to put that in there and use your finger right in the very corner to set your tape to kind of give it an initial stick into the corner. That way it won't be moving around on you. And generally when you wipe, you want to go about in the middle of a piece of tape. You want to again use a nice firm pressure with your 5 inch knife in that particular corner or any that we might do, we're really only moving one side of the knife. So we get that wiped down. And remember, the more mud you take out from under the tape, the easier it's going to be to finish. And it's impossible to take it all out from under there with hand pressure. So, you feel free to put some hand pressure on the knife. So there you've got a nice clean corner tape. And uh, if you want to be fancy when you're hand finishing, most hand finishers don't bother with this, but us tool guys know all about this. If you want to be fancy, save yourself a little work on the next trip. You can leave a little film mud over the tape and again over that edge and you want to just wipe that with a nice firm pressure and understanding how the 5 inch or 4 inch knife for that matter works you will find that you are able to do both sides at the same time which many drywall finishers may say that you can't do but by holding the knife up high enough and with the right pressure to spread the mud evenly without an edge. If you hold the knife up high enough, this way, the side of the knife here will actually be against the opposite wall as you wipe, and that will keep the other side clean. And when you spread the mud evenly on both sides, and you hold the knife at a height where it will ride on the other wall, this side, then you come up with a nice clean corner. Now we're going to raise our camera up a little bit. We're going to do a top angle up here. Got one that isn't too good. So we'll uh, kind of adjust the camera a little bit to look up there so we can see what we're doing. Man. foot ceiling height, I'll be able to stand on the floor and put this in, because I'm tall enough, but uh, what we'll do is, we'll do our ceiling side first, for applying our joint compound, and then, we'll just use one side of the knife to put us a nice even layer up there, and then on the wall side, we'll do the same thing. Uh, a lot of things are, a lot of times you'll see a guy putting on a full 5 inches or 6 inches of mud to do this, but that's not really necessary. And I've always found the uh, less mud you put on, the less you'll have to take off. 
overall the less work you have to do. And that's always been important to me to keep the uh, work going on. Because drywall may be hard work, but it doesn't have to be as much work as many people make it. And again, we'll fold our piece of tape. You know, I'm off camera, so you can't see that, but uh, we'll just tuck that right up in there. And we'll pull it down so that we're touching right there in the corner. And we'll give it a little finger action right there. And now again, using the five inch knife properly, all we've got to do is hold it up against the wall and with a good firm pressure on the ceiling side. And now hold it up against the ceiling completely with good firm pressure again. And we wipe down that wall. I'll go over the ceiling again just to see what we can take out of there. Because again, we want a minimum a joint compound laying under our tape, so we want to take all of that out. To the degree you have a joint compound under your tape, uh, it will be more difficult to achieve a good clean finish. So you want to have very, very little, just a very minimal. And once again, we will get messy with it, and we'll put ourselves a nice little layer on there that will make the tape very easy to finish. It will take a skim coat about the same as this, apply it that tightly, and we'll have a finished corner. And there we go. We just need to do that again and we're pretty much done. And uh, even these nail gashes here, uh, they'll fill in completely on the next coat like that. And the point is, running mud tight that way, all you're finishing again is that little paper edge and this is plenty of joint compound. Uh, this will do the job, but when you apply it this way and wipe it this way, tight and clean, there is practically nothing to sand. There, there's no extraneous material hanging there. There's no lap marks from where you went one direction with the knife. You're not trying to lay any mud on. And uh, you don't want to do that with drywall. That's a mistake. You want to work to this surface always in whatever operation you're doing. But uh, now we've got our flat. We take our saw and cut minus. Uh, maybe we can take a look uh, into a butt joint or two. Butt joints are something in drywall that people make a, a lot of uh, to do about nothing. Uh, again, a butt joint is kind of like a piece of angle tape. Oh, excuse me. A butt joint is kind of like a piece of angle tape. All you're really finishing is that piece of tape, that that thin thin uh, edge of that tape on a butt joint. And the thing about a butt joint is it's in the middle of the wall or away from the corner at least. And uh, you don't have a recess in that joint. It's just uh, one piece of board butted up against another one. And uh, everybody thinks this is extremely difficult to finish, but we'll see that it's uh, not really that hard if we approach it, uh, you know, with a, with a plan anyway. And uh, according to the realities that we find in finishing drywall, but uh, we'll be back with that in a second. here behind me I've got a couple of butt joints here in this garage. One uh, has been pre-filled. Uh, all the big nail gashes have been spotted and pre-filled and uh, that's nice if you want to take the time to do it or if you have the time to do it. It does make it uh, a little bit easier on the taping but it doesn't make a huge difference. I usually don't bother with it. And uh, we've got one up top that we've left raw and uh, this uh, this particular house has been nailed on as far as the butt joints, top angles, and joints. Uh, and I'd like to <coughs> take this time to point out the worst thing you can do 
with a sheet of drywall is take some nails and nail it up. Uh, whether it's wood framing or not, uh, nails are the most destructive thing, uh, the most destructive fastener that's ever been used with drywall. I realize that there was a point in time maybe when that's all there was for attachment, but uh, it is the 21st century now and we have screws and uh, if you screw your drywall on, you'll have a much cleaner surface to work with. And uh, I don't know if it shows up very, uh, very well on camera, but just about every one of these gashes are too deep and the core of the drywall is probably actually broken there at the end. And uh, it's not a very good fastening system at all. But uh, since it's not our house, well, we don't care. We just get, uh, we just get paid to do a little work, so we'll try to work with what we got. And once again, we'll use the six inch taping knife and what we'll do is we'll just mud half of it and we'll spread that even layer of joint compound on this butt joint. Just like that. It's just a one-two move and you're done. And uh, then we'll take our tape and We'll put that on the butt joint thusly. And once again, you can use your knife or a finger, whichever is handiest, to uh, set that tape where you want it. And then with that good firm pressure again, especially on a butt joint, you want to wipe with enough pressure to take every bit of joint compound out from under that tape as it will come out. Because this is where you certainly don't want any additional joint compound under the tape. You don't want this surface to be out beyond the surface of the drywall any. You want just enough mud to stick that paper to this paper, and that's the easiest to finish. A lot of people get in trouble with butt joints because they leave mud under the tape, and the butt joint is actually what I call prominent, meaning that it's actually sticking out at the start. From the time it's taped, it's sticking out, and we've got a huge finish problem right here that we've created by leaving mud under the tape, uh, and that's not a good way to do it if you want to do a good finish in the least time with the least effort. Well, let's take a look at doing this top one. So, jump up here on the economy stilts and uh, hope I'm not blocking it off there. The old uh, economy stilts don't work that well when we grab the four garages. But well, again, we want to take uh, maybe a little more mud on one side of our knife, and we want to spread that uniform layer. And the way you spread mud with a knife is you start with knife high, and as you bring it down, you let that mud flow right off of the knife, just the same as using a brush. And the main thing is you want to have a nice uniform coating. Doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be real heavy. Now you want to put your tape up there. It's a little bit of a reach for me, but uh, I can get it with the help of my taping knife. I'm going to just set that one in with the corner of the blade. I'll we'll cut it right there at the horizontal joint. And we'll wipe that down again with an eye to taking all of that mud out from under. And only 
have here, that amount, we can stick that tape to the wall. There you have it. Now, in doing this, I've also filled those gashes. And uh, at, when that dries, it, it should be about the same place as our other butt joint over here that we pre filled as far as uh, ready to finish. But uh, the thing to remember is uh, just a uniform layer, and you want to wipe it nice and tight and have it clean. And that is the easiest thing to work over. And when it comes to working over this, we'll look into the finishing of the butt joint uh, here in a second. Now, for purposes of illustration, I put some really intense light on this particular butt joint so that uh, you can detect, hopefully, even uh, on camera, any depressions or any prominent tape that uh, might be might be noticeable. But uh, although I don't really see any. Uh, but even under this halogen light, I mean, this butt joint has been taped and has one coat down the middle, which is just a terrible no-no in the world of drywall finishing. But uh, all that I can detect is I've got a slight depression here from a nail gash and a slight depression there. And I can see just a little bit from one of the boards, one of the edges, uh, but I can't feel it. But... Uh, you know, this is just a horrible thing to do, just run a butt joint down the middle to uh, tape it and, and wipe it properly and just run it down the middle. It's just terrible because uh, everybody or most people in drywall figure that uh, this will always be seen. But uh, for illustration, I wanted to do this and this one coat is dry so you can see what we've got. Uh, now the idea would be that this butt joint won't hide very well. Uh, of course, you might notice that it's hung in a way that uh, it should hide or have it the most opportunity to hide because it is hung very close to the corner. But uh, I'll move this light back a little bit. And uh, what we're going to do. finish this thing now or put another coat on uh, most drywall finishers uh, think that you never really can be done with a butt joint but uh, I'm going to try to finish it I'm going to get a straight on straight on look at this thing as much as I can and what we're going to do is Normally, I perform this operation with automatic taping tools, but uh, for our purposes today, uh, I'm going to do this by hand with a 10 inch knife. Now, I uh, coated this down the middle with a 10 inch knife, and uh, today I'm going to take my 10 inch knife and I'm going to apply just a very little mud in an even coat on each side of the butt joint. And we're going to cut in each side by using one corner of the knife and a finger there on that side. So we cut that in. Then we'll put another one on this left side here the same way. And we'll cut both sides of that end the same way. And what we've got here is, again, the tape of our butt joint is the high spot. We just want just a very little crown on each side of that, just a very slight, not a huge crown, but just a little bit. 
comes over finishing at the edge of a piece of paper again. So we're using a knife, so the secret to the knife is the more we lay it down, the more crown it will leave because the mud will push against the middle of the knife and bow it up as it's laid down. The higher we hold it, the more we'll cut that crown. So we can also lay it down with more pressure, hand pressure on it, and get less crown. Uh, I prefer to just use the knife position to control my crown. Now I do want just a little bit, so I'm going to put a pretty good pressure on that. And I'm going to lay it down about medium. I'm going to take off about that much mud, which is probably over half of what I put on. But uh, if you can notice the shading already, you'll notice that the very center of our butt is a little whiter, and to each side a little grayer until that joint compound feathers into the wall. But the idea is that this very center is the high spot. But you'll see that we don't even have enough mud on here that uh, any will come off on my finger. That's probably not the right finger to use. I should probably should use this finger here. But you'll notice that not only will come off my finger, that's how much mud we have on that area where the tape is. We have a little more to the outside. But this is exactly what we want. We want just a very slight crown to the right and to the left. And that is what finishes the butt joint so that it can't be seen. Because finishing drywall is a visual thing. The butt joint is still there, and there is still a hump at this point in the wall. We just don't want to see it. We don't want to come into this room with lights on and notice that there's a butt joint there. It's a, it's a game of hiding. and uh, This is the best way to hide a butt joint. There's a very slight crown on each side. Now, running it down the middle first, uh, that helps out, but it's, it's just a different technique. Uh, and it, it probably is the easiest for uh, a beginner or someone who doesn't finish a lot of drywall. And, and, and it's just a tight coat, a tight, even coat down the middle uh, after the tape is dry. And then the split that you just saw. And uh, that should be a nice finish. And, uh, if you'd like to coat it again that way, feel free. But uh, it probably doesn't really need that. But uh, you may have some pinholes in here or something like that, depending on the pressure and uh, the height of the knife and exactly how much crown you left. And if you left too much crown, you might need to sand it. But, uh, you know, you can, the easiest way to finish drywall overall is to put several light coats on. And uh, don't be bashful about taking all the mud off because uh, the secret is what mud needs to be on the wall will stay there. Uh, you won't be able to take that off. So, and uh, that's probably the most misunderstood thing with drywall is that uh, most finishers think you need to leave some mud on there. Well, the only way you need to leave on there is what needs to be there. You don't need to leave additional beyond that because that's what you see when the lights come on. That's what shows on the floor drywall finish job. Thank you very much. Can I see that shading? Let's see. Let's take a look here. Yeah, we can see that. And as you can see, what I'm talking about here, the very center of this butt joint, where the tape is, is just a little wider. But that is the high area. And uh, the object is that you want that little bit of crown on each side of that. You don't want to put mud on that high area, which we don't have that. So we should have a good butt joint here. All right, now that brings us to butt joints. What you want to do with a butt joint is you want to bring the mud. Usually what you're going to do is you might run all the flats in a place, an apartment, whatever, and then you drop back and do your butts. But you're still going to do your butts when your flats are wet. You may do it room by room, but whatever's convenient for you. But since your flats are wet, you want to bring your butts right down in there. 
here. That will leave you a minimum of detail work to do afterwards. So the tricky thing is how to bring the box off the wall and do it cleanly, yet bring your mud right down in here. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The exciting thing about a box is it is the best tool to finish butts because it will leave a very slight crown on each side of the tape, which is what you want for a good butt finish. Now first I'm going to do the left side. You bring your box down, now you hold your brake, and you just bring it off the wall right there. And you see I've got my mud maybe a half inch below that pencil line. If you want to get it as close as you can to the recess without leaving any mark. And as you can see on the second stroke here, I've come down about an inch and a half. You want to zoom in on that? I did. Okay. So I actually can bring it all the way into the recess, even though it's wet. I don't leave any wet mark or additional mud to clean up or anything. Uh, so it would need to be crossed off, and that would be it. And you'd have a nice finish. And of course, you've got a nice finish on your butt. You have a very slight crown on each side. All you're really trying to cover is the tape, because that surface is flush. So that's, that's all you need to finish a butt. And it's very simple, and it's extremely quick with a box, and you can't do it with that. Remember when you're running a box, as you're learning how to use it, going around the room with it, if you want to use the handle in a way, then you can put the pressure on the blade of the box. You want to have your pressure right across the front and on the blade, and you want to get a handle position, whether you're doing walls or ceilings, that allow you to do that, and a body position that allow you to do that. That puts the best finish on the wall and puts the mud on the wall in a way that doesn't really need any other work. I'll just show you real quick as I go around this room.
bad hunt. I've heard hand finishers say they can do it just as fast, but I'm still waiting to see it. 